Hello and welcome to the FA National Futsal Series Summer Showdown. On the show today, we're watching the National Series 1 as the top level in the country go toe-to-toe -to -toe for the final time in the regular season. This is how the group stood as we head into the final day and we four great games to come on the show. In particular, London Helvetia squared off against Loughborough and Pro Futsal London took on Bolton in de facto semi-finals. Elsewhere, Manchester took on Birmingham in an entertaining clash to decide who is the best of the rest, whilst Derby faced off against an improving Worcester. First up, let's take a look at the action from Group B as Birmingham took on Manchester. First, the two coaches, Ikla Kassane and Sam Richardson. And how do you assess the previous two weeks for this men's team? Because from the outside looking in, it seems like you've had some good performances without necessarily getting the results that you might deserve. I think you've hit the nail on the head there. The first game I was really impressed. Last week uh, we had some very good patches and we dropped a bit. Uh, but that's down to us, so we've got to manage the games better. Uh, we're hoping to fix it today, so but it's the last game. We're going to have lots of fun, enjoy it. I think, to be honest, the, the results, you know, looking at the games, I don't think the results have been fair to them so much. They've got very good individual players. Uh, I think they're a better team than the results suggest, like I was saying. And, um, you know, they're a good team. They're, they can beat you on the counter attack. They've got a good pivot play, so you know they're going to be a tough test. And I'm, I'm worried about obviously we've had the up against Lo uh, Loughborough, then we basically had the, the game against Helvetia. But now it's the, the test because how how do we keep ourselves at a level where we're going to compete and we're going to give the respect that Birmingham deserve? Well, lovely to hear from both Iklak and Sam. There, both sad to see the summer showdown go, but they are determined to end it in style. Let's have a look at the two teams then ahead of this one. We'll kick off with Birmingham. They are in yellow. Sean Bryan is their goalkeeper. Joel Hughes is the big man as the pivot, who is so good to play off Bright Withers and Scott. Their other starting five. Keep an eye on Stylian Petrov on the bench. And also, uh, worth pointing out, Zach Price suspended following his red card last week. He's in the stands watching today, cheering his boys on. For Manchester, it's a familiar five that have caused a lot of problems for plenty of teams so far in this summer showdown. Kai Bowen, the keeper, is rock solid. Jordan Edge has barely put a foot wrong all competition. Uriel Araujo was outstanding, bar a couple of pretty big errors last week against London, Helvetia, Stapleton and Collier in particular have been excellent from the bench. Um, so they'll miss him today for sure. That's a do before and Thompson trying to link up and Bright is on the... Oh, what a goal! Well, we talked about some superb Birmingham individuals. That is a superb individual goal. Yeah, what a way to kick us off. It's bright with the finish, out of absolutely nothing from range against Kai Byrne. What a goal. Yeah, it's a good steal here. Again, you know, we talked about having good individuals. You know, Chris Bright is a Welsh international, so he's played at a decent level. He's been competing. Um, but I've, I was just about to say, I think Birmingham has started the game the brighter of the two. If we, you can get the ball to him and Joel, they can look after it so they can get you that territory that you need to move up the up the court. And then the individual players as Jack Powell and... Oh, we talk about individual brilliance. Jack Powell is at it again. Yeah. His second goal of the summer showdown. That is an absolute cracker. And Birmingham here, if they thought they were a little bit unlucky in the first two weeks, they are cashing in that karma with a couple of brilliant goals. Yeah, I was just saying there that, you know, if you can get some territory and then you get your individual players into sort of 20 metre spaces, they can then go and drop the shoulder, do some damage. They can go either way, this this Birmingham team. He brings so much with the ball at his feet. He's such a talented player, but always learning, always improving. Here come Birmingham with Hughes. Big chance, squares it to the second post. And Birmingham are absolutely running riot here. It's another finish for Bright, who gets his second of the day. And they're having a lot of fun. 3-0 up. Yeah, I think that's um, that's a fantastic goal. That's got everything. That's got, you know, Lewis Scott there 1v1, going inside to come out, beating a player 1v1, then going in the wide area 2v1. And then I think it was uh, Joel who then paid the ball to the second post for a tap in. It was probably like a pure futsal goal, if you like. It had everything. The first half they would have wanted. Arujo finds edge and you can see they're trying to stretch the lines and here's a do before this has to be a goal back oh and it isn't he hits the outside of the post he did everything right there a do before he sat the goalkeeper down I think Bryant just delayed him enough that was their 4 zero coming out then this is the oh has he saved that I my he's just goodness it onto me the post. what a save that is well that explains the reaction that's an absolutely outstanding save 
from Sean Bryant. I was just talking about the benefits of the 4-0 is... Oh, and there's the goal! That has been coming, you feel, since that timeout. Manchester have attacked better despite conceding that third goal. And Danny Stapleton gets them back into this match. That was so, so needed and a brilliant finish. Attempted ball through again from Jordan Edge, who definitely has that passing range, does need to play in at the base of that 4-0 and yeah, find the runners that, definitely. that work the space. He's got a range of passes that he can play diagonally, he can play over the top, he can play through. Oh, Araujo's wandering. He doesn't need any invitation to shoot. He didn't get a hold of it, but that caught Brian out. And Manchester right back into this one. Well, the summer showdown is ending in style. Goals are plenty, it's 3-2. And if anything, they got that goal, but it was against the run of play. So now they've got to get calm. Ooh, no foul given. Two on one. Araujo went alone. Edge is there, and now it must be for Stapleton. Unbelievable. Birmingham think they should have had a free kick. Manchester capitalised on the counter. In the blink of an eye, it's gone from 3-0 to 3-3. What a match. This is why we love this game. You know, you, you, you could be 3-0 up, you could be, if you like, coasting or comfortable, and then all of a sudden the intensity and the momentum, we call it the momentum shift changes, of that intensity in possession and out of possession, because that's the thing that could win you the game as well. Taking over his collie now, three on one. Massive chance for Manchester. Thompson, good save, Elliot. Second time in the match, he's denied a transition like that. May well end up winning Birmingham the game at that rate. Two massive saves from the sub-keeper. Great diagonal pass as well. Arugia. We saw six goals in the first half. We've not seen one in the second so far. That's amazing feat from Jordan Edge. What a save again from Rob Elliott. The third time he's denied Manchester like that. That was nearly one of Jordan Edge's best ever goals. That was so good. Arujo strikes it into Guy. Arujo again. Shot from range and that will do us. A uh, big congratulations to both teams. That was so much fun to watch. A brilliant game of futsal between two really good teams. And as Birmingham and Manchester end their summer showdown campaigns, I think they'll both probably take that result. Chris Barry, a fantastic individual performance from yourself with a couple of goals, but I'll start with the team performance. How nice is that to, to get a point in this summer showdown after three weeks of really hard work? Yeah, I mean, we got a tough draw to start with, so we knew we were coming into it and we were, we were going to be up against it. We are going to have to work hard to get anything out of any game. And I feel like the lads have really grafted today, deserved something out of the summer showdown. We didn't want to come out with it with no points. And I think today we showed on our performances in some of the other games. We were so close to, you know, if things changed and, and things like that. And we, we, we could have been getting another point earlier. But today, we're just really pleased that the lads have pulled through and we got, a, you know, a good result. An excellent performance from the Manchester boys. They're a really close game and a really enjoyable game to watch. What was that actually like to play? And it was, it was frenetic. Yeah, intense. Um, a really, really good game to play in. I think obviously you've got both sides with a lot of quality, playing in two similar ways with similar sort of players, quite technically gifted. Um, yeah, just can't put the ball in the net. <laughs> This will decide the fate of the group. Loughborough need a six-goal win against London Helvetia. Helvetia just need to avoid defeat to head into the grand final. Stranger things have happened, although it would be one of the most impressive victories we've ever seen. It's a big task for Loughborough. Can they get it done? I spoke to their coach, Raul Almeida, and the London Helvetia boss, Enrique Guillen, a moment ago. You've got to get a good result today against a very, very good side. What are you, what are you expecting from this match? Well, we, I asked the players, do you want to lose by one or two goals? And I prepared the team for that. Or do you want to try to win the game and take risks? They want to win the game and take risks. So hopefully it will be, and that show how ambitious and how much they want, because they will give a go, they will fight, they will grow with the game. And we'll see in the end of the score, but they will, they will give a big fight. They will give a good show. And that's the most important here. And that's what we want to do. And that shows how much they want. And I'm very happy with that. So I expect to see our team giving a, a good fight. And we'll see in the end the score. I'm expecting a hard team to beat. They'll be physical for sure. They'll be running the whole game. But I think we got enough in our squad to bypass them. 
and what have you liked so much from your squad in the two games that we've seen so far? Do you think they're getting better as this competition goes on? Yeah, I think we're getting better. We Obviously, the more games we play, the better we get. The understanding between some players is there. Uh, we can control the games when we need to, and we, we can go for goals when we need to as well. The high press will work really well for us, and I think uh, and I think we didn't see the full potential yet, so hopefully in the next few games. Well, here we go. The team's on their way out at the University of Wolverhampton. Neil Morgan and Rayani Medina lead their troops to battle. In the group decider, Joao Almeida said that he asked his boys, do you want to go for it? And they unanimously said, yes, you have to respect that, Mike. You really do. That's the right attitude to have. And it's absolutely one that will be enjoyed, I think, by us. It should create a nice open game for us to watch. But when you do that with London Helvestia, you are dancing with the devil. Yeah, I think so. I think he, you know, he's a really, really good man manager and coach. He would have asked the players what, what do they want to do? And the players would have said, yeah, we want to go for it. And, you know, worst case, if you go for it, you get caught, you've learned a lot, right? And, and I think that's probably the way they'll be looking at this rather than actually, you know, trying to nick a 1-0 win where they can't go through. So I think probably on balance, the best to go for it and let, let's see what they can do. Well, there are the Loughborough boys. This is the Loughborough squad. A few changes for the Purple Army in this one. A few injuries have forced them to look to their development squad to bring in a few extra men. Joe Bickerstaff has been so consistent in goal for Loughborough, one of their standout players. Likewise, Jan Maivald, Lawson McCarthy, David Kowalczyk, and Jonathan Langley will be their opening starters. The likes of Ruben Santos and Bruno Ribeiro are solid names, and Marshall Hale in particular has had a great tournament so far. For London Helvetia, it's a squad star-studded with talent wherever you look. Mark Croft is as good as they come in net. Liam Palfreyman has been superb. Likewise, anyone really on this list, Ivan Zhu, Raindina and Claudia Ribeiro are their starting five, but they're standout players in this tournament. The likes of Vitor Hugo, Eduardo Tijerin, Ruben Fernandez, man of the match last week. The list goes on and on and on. Here we go then. It's one of the new boys, David Kowalczyk, over the kickoff for Loughborough. As we get underway, Loughborough require a miracle. But don't write them off, not yet at least. Jarrell Mader and his boys are going to go for this. They are a hungry bunch, they are a very fit bunch. We saw last week that. After a really strong start by Manchester, Helvetti just ground them down, didn't they? They couldn't last the course. This Loughborough team are supremely fit. A great squad of athletes. They will they will give this high energy for a long time. Yeah, we know Loughborough, you know, young, younger players, if you like. Not young, but younger players. Some coming older. But I think for Loughborough to do well today, they're going to need their big players to have really big games. So Jan Maivo, Joe Bickerstaff. You know, Ruben Santos, they need to be the ones that really sort of had, had really big, powerful games today. It's Lefra on the ball with Maival. This is Marshall Hale. Here comes Medina. That's a lovely ball. Liam Palfreyman gets on the other end of it. And what a great tackle by Jan Maival. The first of many, I'm sure. Maival with the header. Palfreyman gets around the other side of it. This will be a flying pace if this is kept up. As Croft pings it all the way to Medina, what a ball, what a touch, what a turn, what a shot, what a save. Yeah, it's brilliant there, and you see Helvetia's quality through uh, Mark Croft, who actually moved clubs this season from Loughborough to Helvetia, so that's a that's a great ball from him. Of it, him stepping out forces Loughborough to go back a little bit, just reduces that danger of the press. He trusts his ability with the ball so much, but he might need it here. Jan Maiveld stepping through, and he had to be up high there, did Mark Croft. Yeah, and I think that's where you see uh, Mark Cross' ability with his feet in both ways. He starts high out of possession so he can sweep up, but also in possession he trusts himself and his team trusts him to be able to play out. And it causes problems, but and here's Joe Bickerstaff oh, doing the same. Real good numbers advantage there, but it's turned over to Ruben Fernandez. Just on as a sub, it's Ribeiro, it's Fernandez. It's wide, deflected for a corner. This match has started at a breakneck pace. Enjoying it immensely. Eduardo Tijerin and Vitor Hugo have joined us. That was magical feat, wasn't it, for Fernandez? 
Smile on the face there of Lucas Totti as he held off the challenge from Langley. They will enjoy this, the Helvetia players. They love the challenge, they love the battle, they're in one. Shot from Kavalchi! Well, there's one. Loughborough begin their ascent on the summit. 1-0. The shot came in from Kowalczyk. It's a very, very rare error for Mark Croft. Deflection was unkind, but he will be so disappointed to let that through. Yeah, it was a, it was a tough one. Took a deflection, but you know he probably went to ground a little bit early. But Loughborough here pressing really aggressively. Here comes Huxter. See her in a way. It's going to join us in the commentary box. Catch, I was going to say, catching, you know, Helvestia uh, in possession a little bit, but, you know, really high intensity game. The, the question is here whether Loughborough can sustain this intensity for 40 minutes. It's such a big ask, isn't it? And that's why it would be such a, such an accomplishment. Turning there is Malta. Maivald with him every step of the way. Somehow squeezes it out, does so well. Vitor Hugo wants it on his left foot, teased off for Monty, onto his right. Still no way past. Monty turning, twisting, and denied. The Loughborough purple wall holds strong. Yeah, great individual talent there from Monty Vita Hugo. You know, being able to shift and move it and, and keep it keep it going. Didn't quite get the enough time to get that shot off. Brilliant play by Helvetia, but like you say, a wall of purple. A substitution made there by Helvetia. It's uh, Ruben Fernandez who's back on. Man of, the man of the match, rather, last week against Manchester. This is Guillermo Monti. For Fernandez, for Vitor Hugo. Gets it back off the face of McCarthy, and he can't quite get the shot away transition. now. Two on one transition. Ruben Santos, can he hold it? He can, he's still going. Santos needs some help, does he? Yeah, he did. And now it's a 2v1 for Helvetia with Vitor Hugo. Fernandez tees it back for Monti. Monti, good save. Left for a hold firm. Yeah, I think Monty just gave one of the left for subs a bit of a bit of a nudge there. They were holding the game up. Oh, what a ball from Vitor Hugo. Paul Freeman blocked out by Bickerstaff. That's fantastic keeping. Now Santos somehow holds his footing and he will win the free kick. What a big moment from big Bickerstaff. Yeah, again, another great save. I'm just, we were just talking about when you know, these little fouls have come in because it, it's such an open game. That is such an unbelievable Brilliant. ball, isn't it, from Vitor Hugo? Yeah, it's a great chop back from Hugo, and then Joe Bickerstaff staying tall there to use his chest as his body to block the goal. Another big moment. So far, they've all gone left for his way. McCarthy with the block, Vitor Hugo forward. Sixpence pass for Fernandez, who sets it back for Vitor Hugo, and him and Neil Morgan collide, and there's a a lot of respect and sportsmanship out there as well. Helvetia very appreciative of how hard left for making this for them. Tijerin on the half volley, struck that beautifully. Good save by Bickerstaff. Is there a counter? Yes, there is with Neil Morgan, but Vitor Hugo Brilliant was back defending. quickly. Brilliant defending by Vitor Hugo there. What a strike that was. This yeah. is the volley with the screens and the blocks. Half volley, should we say. Great strike. Fed through to Fernandez. That's clever. Tijerin looked to square it. Maivad was there. Brilliant. This game is really exciting, really open, going front to back. High intensity, but Helvetia definitely got the quality there. I think that you know I'd be happy if I was out that Loughborough get to the to the half time with a with a one-nil scoreline because I can oh, see. Oh, you would take it if you, you offered him that it. at the start of the match. Ivan Zhu will strike it off the bar. That goal almost got sent all the way back to Birmingham. What a hit from Ivan Zhu. You know, their quality here is starting to show. Fernandez and Bickerstaff held it on the line, clawed it back from the brink. Ivan Zhu there with a strike, so powerful. Here he is again, can't control it. Loughborough just need a little spell of possession here just to get themselves back into the game. The goal at the moment feels inevitable. But I'm surprised at this point, the bar and the post are still attached to each other. That was a rocket. Yeah, the hardest thing you'll find here with Loughborough is they're spending lots of time without the ball, high intensity. When they do get it, they're not in any structure. So, and Alvesia are pressing a lot higher now. So when they do get it, they've got no time on the ball to start something. So it's very difficult. They're being pinned back by the quality of Alvesia here, by their movement. And if they get too deep, 
they're going to shoot from range and that's going to cause... It's true, it's blocked again by Langley. Cause more problems. At the minute they can't get over the 10 metre mark because, you know, if they don't get pressure on and they get beat by the individual quality, um, they're just getting shots range, so got to be resolute. This is Tijerin. Feeds into Fernandez, who slips. Here is, they've got no... Nobody to be to be able to figure to, have they? So because they're so you deep. See there, so Marshall compact. Hale looked up, didn't he, and realised he had nowhere to pass to. Yeah. So if they are, you know, playing on that low block, they're going to need that, keep that forward thinking. Loughborough can't get out of half here, really. The captain. It's a lovely little ball for Ju, and there's the goal. What a finish that is from Ivan Ju. Brilliant, brilliant goal that. The pass was weighted to absolute perfection. And the finish was so cute. Yeah, brilliant little long parallel, if you like, through to the middle. And then the, the defender, I think, Jan Myvild and Bickerstaff weren't quite sure who was picking up. And probably Joe will be really disappointed with himself there because he could have come and smothered that really quickly and been, a, been aggressive. So, you know, as a young keeper today, you'd want to see him come and take everything early. Tichelin for Jew. Croft providing the overlap should he need it. Here he is. Mark Croft. Oh, what a finish for the keeper. And the former Loughborough man comes back to haunt his old side. What a finish from Mark Croft, that is. And Helvetia at long, long last take control of this game and take the lead. Yeah, we were talking, weren't we, about keepers in the game before, about Edison being good with his feet, but sometimes you need to attack. But, you know, that's the toe poke finish as well. But what a finish that is from Mark Croft. Vito Hugo is strong, Fernandez so clever with the ball at his feet. He operates in those tight spaces so, so well, doesn't he? Yeah, he's brilliant. Moves off the ball well. Oh, now then, Tijerin! And I think Bickerstaff got a touch on that. That's a brilliant save, if so. Speaking of operating in tight spaces, let's talk about Eduardo Tijerin. Look at yeah, this. Yeah, drops the shoulder, goes outside. Oh, so save. Save. What a Great save. save, yeah. He's made a few. Now can Ruben Santos squeeze that through? Oh! Oh no, you've got to let it go. What an opportunity for Loughborough if the referee just holds a second. It's a yellow card for Ruben Fernandez. He's delighted with that. Yeah, he's again this the shield interviews in the body. You know, then he's come inside. Johnny Langley for Lawson McCarthy. Just Tried to get the ball up court, and that's a rattle of the post from Ruben Fernandez. Myval just stood off him a touch there. Any space is all he needs. Now Liam Paul Freeman. Helvetia knocking at the door. Bigger staff denies them once again. Only needs half a yard, Fernandez, and he had a little bit more there. This is Croft. Space to move into. Look to find the run of Monty. Santos looked to shoot, Monty stopped that from happening. Santos, so durable, so difficult to stop. Here's Langley, sits the defender down, oh, had to score. Had to score. Did everything right until the finish. And that's just a difference at the minute, isn't it, in these situations where, you know, they're getting half chances, chances if you like, but they're not actually putting in the back of the net. You feel like if Helvetia were in that position, they would score. Oh, gorgeous from Paul Freeman. What a move. Fernandez stood on the ball, and Maival was able to get back in. And Loughborough actually have a break, and again, they had a great chance to counter. Stopped short by the referee. Another early whistle for me, but oh, how about that from, from Liam Paul Freeman? A little flick, and then he just stood on the ball here, didn't he? Have a watch of this. Oh, it's gorgeous, isn't it? Yeah, that little pair's work again. Alvesia almost there. A game, a few goals, but an immensely enjoyable one. Really has been Helvetia's toughest test of the group. And we've stood tall to it. My bound! Wow. Would you believe it? Jan Myveld scores with a tackle. I can't think of anything more fitting for the left run number two. Wow, well, you've just seen here Helvetia trying to build out of possession, one of the most experienced players in. Viti Hugo, he didn't expect, didn't hide the ball enough on the, the safe side and um, Maival sniffed blood and he just managed to tap it in and Crofty didn't know what was going on because he was comfortable. But it looks like Loughborough are going to carry on flying here to go for the win. Yeah, huge credit. That's what Jean made said at the start of the 
So the game, he said, he asked his players, do you want to go for this? Or do you want to play it tight? And they were like, no, we, we want to go for it. This is what we're about. Yep. We want to test ourselves. And to the immense credit of these Loughborough players, who were massive underdogs today, they have given everything. There's Hale. Rivero, shot comes in, Hale retrieves. We've got a little nudge in the back there for Vitor Hugo, for sure. Oh, feet from Lucas Totti, how about that? And there's the pace as well from Totti. Can he find the square? No, Jan Maiveld is there. Who else? But that was mind-blowing from Lucas Totti. He, that's his change of pace. Look at the way he goes past um, McCarthy, I think it was, and then just tries to chip it in. But this is why we really love the game. Like This end, end few minutes of futsal is just amazing with the counter-attacking, with one team attacking, one team defending, a player on his own line to try and save it. This is the exciting part of the game. 143 remaining. It's been an amazing game, this. Love yeah. both games so far. It's been two fantastic matches. Yeah, we said today was going to be really exciting, and it's it's definitely shown that. Got a ball from Brilliant Peter time. Hugo. Paul Freeman for Medina! That is what he does so, so, so well. Rayoni Medina rifles Helvetia back in front. Yeah, it's all about the first touch here. It's all about, as the ball's been lofted into Ryan Medina, it's all about the first touch here. It looks like he's going to spin on the outside and he's just put it back into his path. So Lawson McCarthy there just tries to cover one side and it gets caught. Started with that beautiful diagonal, didn't it, from Vitor Hugo. Yeah, brilliant diagonal pass. And Loughborough denied with a minute to go, are they? Or are they going to force one last twist? Ribeiro, hail side netting. Side netting. Mark Croft into Medina's feet. Oh, he couldn't, could he? Oh! <laughs> that was nearly all bets off goal yeah. of the tournament. They know, you know, Ryan Medina here knows that the keeper's out of the goal and he's just trying to get it on target. Probably would have gone in if he was there because they're flying. Oh. Ribeiro! Oh, these lads are giving it so much. They want a corner left, but they're not getting one. It's fist into the feet of Monty. Rivera's going to go properly in goal here. Great tackle again by Maival. Here's the transition. 2v2, Marshall Hale doing everything to keep up with it. Santos will go alone, and Croft was there. Brilliant feet by Ruben Santos there. Little step over, drops inside. What a match this is. What a match this Look is. Look at this, in your side. Shoot high if you can, but brilliant. What an end to this game, fantastic level today. Will there be one last chance for a shot? Big Staff will let it fly. It's not going to be enough. Helvetia qualify for the Summer Showdown final. They scrape by a dogged, determined, brilliant Loughborough side who gave it absolutely everything. Ivan, a, a massive congratulations on a big win Thank for you. London Helvetia. That looked... It, first of all, it was a brilliant match for us to watch. What was that like to play? And it was intense. Yeah, it was very intense. Uh, without the preparation that we've been doing a long the time, it wouldn't be possible uh, because we were trailing from behind and to change the result against a team that was very strong and very quick, it was difficult. Yeah. Those are the matches that I imagine that you and your teammates want to play in because it nothing prepares you better and makes you better than, than playing that kind of match. Uh, I'll definitely agree with that, especially one step before the final. Uh, it shows that it's a great test and with this it will make us be more aware for the, for the final and to prepare more, definitely. And you mentioned the final, it's all set for you now, you can start preparing for that grand final. What would it mean to the you and this Helvetia team to, to win it and get that qualification? First of all, because I just recently joined Helvetia and like they made me feel home already. Um, it will be very delighting to get the first trophy in the first tournament, but without preparation and without playing the final, we never know, so we just have to work. Congratulations on a brilliant individual performance as well today and for qualification. Thanks a lot. Without my team, I wouldn't be able to do so. Welcome back to the summer showdown here from the University of Wolverhampton. We already know 
one of our finalists, that is London Helvetia. We're about to find out who they will meet in the grand final. Will it be Pro Futsal London? Will it be Bolton? I spoke to both coaches, see if they could give me the answer. Like really looking forward to it. Bolton have a number of England internationals. Um, Cookie, of course, uh, probably one of the best players that's ever played in this country. Of course, got a really good keeper in Joe Payne as well. So now, nah, really looking forward to testing ourselves, and yeah, hopefully we'll pull through. Um, the lad, the lads are really, really excited. To be honest, we're we've, we're all buzzing for this game this week. So main thing is that we all do our jobs. We stick to the plan. Hopefully, we can cause them a few issues. We spoke to you guys right the first week, and you mentioned how there's so many new players, a lot of a lot of stuff has been worked on. It's a transitional sort of squad. How almost pleasantly surprised have you been by how good the performances have been in the last two weeks? It's, it's a really good good bunch of lads. So it's not been it's not been too difficult for everyone to, to get involved and understand how we, we play and what we want to do. So it's, it's, it's been really quite a seamless transition, to be honest. And the last two games obviously built you up to this. It's the hardest test of the group in Pro Futsal London. What do they do well that you need to overcome in this game? They move the ball well. Uh, they've got some really good players so hopefully we can we can stop them and cause them a few issues well here we go then it all comes down to this lovely to speak to both uh, John and Joe a little bit earlier the teams are gathering in the tunnel about to make their way out Pro Futsal London against Bolton Futsal Club both teams have won both of their matches therefore it all comes down to this winner takes all the advantage in the goal difference lands with Pro Futsal London. If this game is a draw, they will qualify. A massive task for Bolton, who've impressed us so much, Mike, in this opening couple of weeks of the Summer Showdown. We, we spoke to them in, in the first week. They said, it's a, it's a transitional squad, a lot of new players, a lot of young players. They've been so impressive in the first two weeks. They've got the chance to qualify, but this is without doubt their toughest test. Yeah, this is, this is a whole new level for, for Bolton today. Um, you know, they've done really well, they've moulded well. Joe and Stuart Cook, the, 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 the coaches, have pulled them together well. But I think this is going to be a whole different test about how their discipline is without the ball. Um, but you know what? They've got, some, they've got some goals in them that we've seen. They've got some ability to go past people. Uh, you know, I suppose it's like we talked about with Loughborough earlier. It's about how their big players can, can turn up today. It's Matt Overton's, Rafe Barth, as we saw, obviously Stuart Cook, how well they manage this game as we go. Well, let's take a look at the Pro Futsal London squad. It is a very good one, as you might expect. Johnny Sim will line up in goal. Russell Goldstein has been impressive and consistent throughout. John Current is an energetic midfield man. Dennison, one of the players of the tournament so far. And Xavi Corral floats better than anyone else, really, for this Pro Futsal London squad. They'll rotate their fours. Their options on the bench are amazing. Dixon a hat-trick last week. Richard Ward has scored plenty of goals likes of Rand and Griffith Coles. It's, it's a fantastic squad. And that's what Bolton have to beat. And they themselves have their own very, very talented lineup. Joe Payne is as experienced a goalkeeper that exists in this competition. And speak of experience, you speak of Stuart Cook, one of the one of the best English players to ever do it in this sport. He needs to lead his young teammates and his young charges from the front, which he does have the ability to do. Yeah, I think today's going to be about how well Stuart can get hold of the ball for 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 Bolton and dictate that as a, you know the, like the Sierra, the starter of moves, but you know being a good defender. So you know how physically what shape he's in after lockdown as well is going to be a challenge for him to play lots of minutes. But they're going to need him on court for lots of minutes today. So this is going to be a really interesting game. But I know one thing: Pro Futsal are going to come out of the blocks 100 mile an hour. So the first three four minutes with Bolton is important. They certainly are. Every minute important in this game. Winner takes all. Winner plays London Helvetia. It's a lovely ball down the line from Current, but no way through for Xavi Corral. So Mikey Bulmer, first touch of the ball for him, the number 17 for Bolton. Been really impressed with Mikey all the way through this competition. This Bolton squad have really played well in their two games. They're really impressed. And they've got better as well. Their performance last week was exceptional. Yeah, their performance last week was brilliant. You know, they're, they're wanting to become, you know, I think you've got Pro Futsal, Helvetia, Loughborough, Manchester, and then you've got Bolton, uh, Birmingham, and sort of like, you know, there's a top tier, a second tier, and a third tier. And Bolton want to become part of that sort of second tier, really. And that's where um, they're looking to, to excite. That's the first touch of the ball for Dennison, the Brazilian. Holds off Mikey Bullman really well. And 
good to see Bolton getting in and amongst him. He's yeah. the man you've got to stop if you're Bolton. So both teams here high pressing straight away. They don't want to give no possession to any team. Straight into possession. <laughs> oh, and Mikey Bulmer just there. Left one on Russell Goldstein yeah. there, didn't he? Bit of intent there. Straight away yellow card is an early one within the first you know, 25 seconds of the game, really. So I think the coaches are going to play a big role today. Yeah, Joe Ryan, a really good young coach. Does brilliant work with this Bolton team. But here's a chance, and there surely is the goal. What a bit of defending from Ollie Whaley. How on earth hasn't that ended up in the Bolton there? What a chance for Dixon and what a chance for Griffith Coles. Yeah, biggest chance of the game here. Calvin Dixon loses Stuart Cook brilliantly. They're looking for a foul, but really I think, you know, I think it was Griff, was it, that should have probably put that in the back of the net. Now let's see what Pro can do in terms of keeping their pressure on this end. Here is Griffin Coles. That's a lovely first touch from Rand, isn't it? Great ball across, and there's the first goal. Calvin Dixon, the hat-trick hero of last week, has opened the scoring for Pro Futsal London. What a brilliant goal that is. Brilliant there. It's, you know, Calvin Dixon finds a finish at the second post. You know, the experience to know that if it gets across the goal, someone's got to be at the second post, but it's probably all about this turn, really. The turn, the hide, the shield finds the second post. And they'll be disappointed, Bolton, with that, because it seemed a bit too easy. But, you know, well done, Pro, there, for getting that first one. Cook controls the beautiful ball around the corner. Bulmer turns really well. Shoots and a good save from Sim. What a save that is. You know, that is great turn from Mikey Bulmer there. Central areas, pro were pressing so hard, he find a pocket to turn it. He does this so well. Remember week one we talked about how he gets into the pockets and then toe poke. What a save that is. All four have been brilliant throughout this summer showdown. Oh, a good save that is from Sim. Overton ripped one. Couldn't strike this any better. Oh, that's a fingertip save, wasn't it? Great stop from Sim. Kernahan takes over. Dennison will cut that out. Pro Futsal's sort of Futsal tactics starting to come out a little bit here as individuals. Oh, it's brilliant for Kernahan through the legs of Current. Finds Lamb. Can he find Kernahan? No, what a chance for Bolton. What a chance for Bolson. I thought that was going to be a goal when it came out to, uh, I think it was Mr. Lamb, and then Kernan was going on the second post. I actually thought it was it was going to be a goal. It's a shame that final pass wasn't just quite as the standard. Oscar Lucas stood over. He's got half run Lamb in the D. Kernan on this left side position. Oh, and it's in! Rob Harper! Bolton spring the trap! I was and just, they are level. Yeah, I was just about to say here, Oscar Luce, just know, keep it simple, keep the pressure on, keep peppering it in that D, and they've got to defend it. Make the team defend it. And what a, what a, what a cool little finish I think it was from Harper there to get on the end of it, because, oh, brilliant. What a game, another great game, right? Yeah, we thought it might be, and so it's proved to be. 12 minutes remaining in this first half. It's on as even so far between Pro Futsal London and Bolton. Here comes Jared Bastian, no way past Bulmer and Barber. Cook back on for Bolton. Overton, what a good first touch. That is! How about the second? Wow! 2 1 Bolton! Now, that is all about the first touch. You know, Matt Overton, we know he's got a rocket. Again, you know, played in the national team, comes out on the left side. Great throw from Joe Payne, put some air on it. But look at this for a touch. Put it into his path, wallop. And he lets some of the pro futsal London lads hear it as well. He's got a booking for his trouble. There's a little bit of spice in this one. That is such a good goal from Matt Overton. I, I, I think, you know, the referees need to be really mindful about this game, spiring a little bit out of control. You know, there's going to be a little bite in this now, which we've seen from the start. But what you don't want is cards spoiling it. But I'm not saying he shouldn't get it, but I'm just saying, you know, Let's calm and manage the game as much as we can because there's definitely going to be inside the court a lot of spire. What a touch this is. Brilliant pick out, by the way, Brilliant from Joe, for Joe Payne. What a touch that is. He couldn't have put it anywhere else, right? What a goal. You know, it's a great first touch. Dennison demands it. Dennison gets it. Him versus Cook. Dennison will strike one. What a save by Joe Payne. Tips it onto Brilliant. the crossbar. We see a, if we get to see a little replay of that, what you'll see cleverly here 
is Richard Ward coming off and screening Stuart Cook. Watch this. You not you can't defend it inside. So a little subtlety of a 2v2 vertical action. What a ball. Oh, what a pass Goldstein that is. Couldn't Denison. quite pick out the cross. No, that's that's inches away being 2-2. Oh now Whaley. Is it going to be a chance for Bolton at the other end? Whaley's still there. Current somehow squeezes it out. Goldstein being fouled from the back. Play continues. Wards. Feeds it into Goldstein who takes over. Back for Ward, he'll slow it down. Current in space, Ward didn't need him, corner kick. End to end, you know, open game, end to end. Yeah, John Tapio Owens here isn't panicking, is he? He's not, not too bothered about taking some of his players off, maybe who are, have been doing well, as we've been saying. He trusts all of his squad. It's lovely feet from Cook, lovely feet from Cook. Can he finish? Not quite. Jared Rand shuts out the light. Stuart Cook very nearly doing it again. <laughs> Yeah, hiding, revealing, moving, shifting, screening. Again, you know, the ability that he has with the ball in these tight areas to move players into where you think, you think you've got it and all of a sudden it opens. I know it'll be really disappointing not to score, probably. Cook with the ball, what a ball it was too. Lamont, oh, Whaley, off the line! Off the line and out. What a bit of defending from Xavi Corral. Now, Bolton are celebrating. I don't think this went in. No, that's off the line. What a brilliant bit of defending. Yes, yeah, that's outstanding. The line. Oh, that's great defending from Lamb. Now then, 3v2, 3v3 with Dixon joining. Griffin Coles reads it. Now it's 2v1. Ollie Whaley, can he make the block? No. Back racing comes Kernahan. Still Bastia off the post and out. What a save, Joe Payne. What a match this is. What a save. I thought it had too many touches. And then the second phase where he's rolled it across his body and opened it up again. I think Joe Payne just tipped it onto the post. That's a big save. He's made a couple. You know, Pro here can move the ball from central areas a bit quicker. Brilliant three in line from Richard Ward and Tulua Sotonye there. Dennison with the strike. Payne with the save. Ward couldn't get there. Schofield with a crucial clearance. It was all about the three in line there. Richard Ward rolls over it. Comes cuts in the middle. Then it creates a diagonal, if you like, into the second post. Dennison comes in. Strike, save. Brilliant defending as well. Last it. It's Ward with a strike. Another great save by Joe Payne. He's getting more and more involved as his half has gone on. What a good ball from Cook. Barber brings it down. Can't quite keep it in. <laughs> Dennison just gives him a little bit of a nudge. It's a little bit spicy, this game. And for me, it's all the better for it. What a touch from Goldstein, by the way. Can he finish? Not quite. What an effort. What a ball, what a touch. Overton does absolutely everything to Brilliant. put him off. Brilliant ball. Brought down <laughs> fantastically by Goldstein. And he's just trying to hit the target there. Tournier breaks the press. Breaks two. Can he go all the way? Tournier, what a tackle by Cook. Will it break for Goldstein? Yes, it will. And what a miss by Richard Ward. Oh. Well, you'd have put your house on him. If they wanted that chance to fall to anyone, it probably would have been Richard Ward. Yeah, Cook has made a good tackle. Probably a bit unfortunate to come out, but that's a huge miss, isn't it, for, for Richard Ward? Tournier. It's interesting here. Satunye has got into a different four. If you know, I think he started that half so bright. Sorry, finished that half so brightly. He's come into the sort of first four. All right, it's lovely from Ward. Satunye, can he get around the goalkeeper? Lamb off the line. I was just talking about Satunye. You know, he started really, finished really brightly in that that first half, and he's got into the starting four because he's he looks so lively. How about that from Richard Ward for a three ball? By the way, that's such a good effort from Satunye. Yeah. They're saying this is where it's now being a bit open for Bolton because the lines in between the lines are open and Pro Futsal can find their passes. Dixon! What a save from Joe Payne, yeah. who celebrated that like a goal. What you notice is the recovery runs are not quite the same intensity as they were in the first half. So there's, there's passing lines in between and in the pockets and in between the lines of Bolton, which Pro are exploiting at the moment. Foul. And that is five for Pro Futsal London. OK, that's interesting now because one more and you see a 10 metre and that could kill the game for Pro, so... Woof. So Pro here trying to play with a 
You know, a little bit of a 4 0, trying to get those diagonals off again, as we know. Oh, he won the ball. Oh, now then, that could be huge. Yep. 10 meter penalty's been given, and Jared Rand is I'd devastated. Like Booking's like been given. And then like 10, 10 meter penalty. Stuart Cook stood over it, of course, he is up against Johnny Sim. These it's are, Cook. These are not easy, though. They're difficult. Off the post and out. Yeah, that could be a game changer. They're not easy. If that would have gone in, I think we might have seen Bolton be able to edge it. Game's still on here, but again, still nine minutes without another foul. It's difficult. Launched out towards Schofield. One well by Pro Futsal London. Dixon. Dennison fires it to Bazja. Great ball. Bazja inside. Chance to shoot! And Pro Futsal London a level! Yeah, I was just about to say that the Bolton looked a little bit disorganised in, in that defensive structure. Players were doing one job and got caught. And then I think Bazza here has just dropped inside. A little bit of a screen, a clever screen. Did you see that from uh, Dixon? And that opened it up and, you know, Stuart won't be too happy about the screen. And I'm, I'm not sure the ref would see that, but great block. Current tries to beat Overton around the outside. What a ball that is. Dixon, one on one. Can he finish? Wants Bastia, finds Bastia, can't find the finish. And Bolton survive, and they survive by the skin of their teeth. Pro Futsal here just dominating possession as they like to do, doing really well. Oh, that's good play. Overloads. Ward, one on one. Chance to win it. Great save by Payne. Ward still keeps it. Still no way through. Good defending by Barber. Pro Futsal London reset. What a big save from the Bolton skipper. So Tunier will strike it, will he? No, sits one down, squares it across, red by Barber. Another brilliant bit of defending from the Bolton number 10. Ooh. Done really that well. Feet. Bolton on the attack with Lucas by Dennison. Has Barber still for company? He takes over. Trying to bait a foul, trying to bait a tackle. And it will be a pro yeah. futsal London ball after all of that. This is current. Uses Johnny Sim. Dennison Ward does well to beat Cook to it. He will get around him as well. It's Ward! What a goal that is for Richard Ward! And Pro Futsal London are heading through to the grand final. Yeah, we were just talking about Richard Ward looking like the danger man leading from the front. Probably got a little bit of a spin and what a topo finish here. So it's just spun around. Great move from Stuart Cook. Ollie Whaley couldn't get there, and it's a rocket into the net. What a goal that is. He's not Two. done that around anyone, by the way. <laughs> yeah, he's done that around Stuart Cook knowing he's pressing, um, <laughs> and, the, and the finish is good. And that is that. Pro Futsal London have made their way through to the Summer Showdown Grand Final. A brilliant victory over a brilliant Bolton who ran them every step of the way. They can hold their heads very, very high, but Pro Futsal London got the job done in the end. A really professional 3-2 win. Oh, it's fantastic. You know, everyone talked about it in these interviews, but after COVID coming back and having this kind of competition, it's brilliant. It's what we live for. Hopefully it was a great spectacle to watch. I can vouch for that. It was an absolutely amazing game. A word for your opponents there because Bolton pushed you further than you've been in a long while, I'd wager. Yeah, full credit to Bolton. We, we came out knowing we only needed a draw to, uh, to qualify for the final. And Bolton put us on the back foot. They played very direct. They had a really good game plan. We've got quality young players in there. Matt Overton, Rafe, Mikey Bulmer doing really well. It's great to see. And obviously experienced players like Cookie can make a game plan that's hard to beat. But you know, we've got to, we've got to overcome those kind of opponents. The final against Helvetia is going to be just as difficult. Definitely more so, and we're going to have to make it a scrappy game if we want to win the goal. Yeah, it's been a it's been a great day. Those those last few games we've seen, you know, the final of Pro Futsal Herbesi is is going to be it's going to be an amazing game. But you know, these two will want to get a win. Freeman, that's clever. Freeman, and there's the goal for Derby. A little bit of luck involved in the build-up. Richardson's pass was deflected very handily into the path of Emmanuel Freeman, but didn't he finish it well when the chance arose? Brett. Oh, he's done really well there, Joe Brett. Finds Lanham. And there's the goal! I think it's actually an own goal from Charlie Marzano in the end, but that was lovely play. Still 1-1 here. Oh, what a good ball. What a good goal. 
What a good goal. Huntington with the pick. Gascoigne with the finish. That is as clean and as clinical as you like. Uh, they're bringing a player over. Kerwin, it looks like he might strike. One through, two options. Oh, all the way through for Dale Richards. Gets it through to Marzano. Oh, that's clever oh. for Marzano. That's a Brilliant. lovely, lovely goal. Gascon and Marzano linking beautifully. And if there is going to be a goal to win it, that seems like a fitting one. Taking over is Kerwin again. And the back post, Brett gets up and scores. Yeah, goal I thought stands. it was a goal. I thought it was a goal. Unanswered. Oh, is there going to be another goal? Surely not. Oh, amazing. <laughs> you couldn't make it up. Sam Huntington. Has he got in won the game a second time for Derby? Right off the kickoff. Worcester must be furious. Yeah, the Worcester be disappointing, but they're defending, you know, making sure they do the job right. Well, what a fabulous day of action in the FA National Futsal Series. Four brilliant games, all decided by a single goal. Tremendous entertainment, and we cannot wait to see our teams again very soon. Two, however, we will see, of course, sooner rather than later. The grand final is set and it sees Pro Futsal London take on London Helvetia on the 27th of June as the summer showdown finally reaches its conclusion. We look forward to seeing you then, but for now, it's goodbye.